Serial communication and posture were related to treatment during the IOF meeting this year, and now I will focus on highlights regarding treatments. Two publications were published last summer showing the efficacy in terms of fracture prevention of two new acetabolic agents. The first one is abeloparatide, an alloy of PTHRP. Abeloparatide is efficient for preventing both vertebral but also non vertebral major acetabolic fractures, and the drug will be launched soon. The CHMP asked the firm providing data in population with a high risk of fracture. Abeloparatide was shown to be efficacious for patients with a high frac score at baseline for major osteopathic fracture, defined by a score higher than 10%, or high frac score at baseline for hip fracture, defined by a score higher than 5%. In the same way, the efficacy of avaloparatide was demonstrated whatever BMD values at baseline, whatever fracture status at baseline, and whatever age at baseline. Also, avaloparatide was shown to be efficacious for elderly people defined by an age higher than 80 years, although the number of patients in this population was obviously weak, so we need to be cautious regarding the definitive conclusion of this study. The second hastabolic agent is romosuzumab. Romosuzumab is a monoclonal antibody directed against sclerostin, and in this meeting, Libanetti and colleagues have shown that romosuzumab is particularly and quickly efficacious for preventing clinical vertebral fracture. A communication from Kendler of Codlin colleague have shown that teriparatide is more efficacious in terms of fracture risk reduction than residuinate in osteopathic women for preventing both vertebral but also clinical fracture. A large cohort of osteopathic women obtained from a medical database compared the incidence of fracture for women treated by either alendronate or by denosumab. Those receiving denosumab had a lower risk of both hip and clinical fracture obviously was not a randomized study, so we need to be cautious regarding the conclusion of the study. A randomized study compared the efficacy of either denosumab or residunate in a population of patients treated by corticosteroid and BMD gains, whatever the size, were larger for those treated by denosumab compared with those treated by residunate. Finally, a meta-analysis comparing the efficacy of vertebroplasty and kyphoplasty was presented in the Congress. The others did not find any difference in terms of efficacy for reducing and improving quality of life between the two procedures. However, although this point was not underlined by the other, balloon kyphoplasty is less often associated with cement link outside the vertebral body.